The new movie, Belle, tells the little-known true story of a mixed-race woman born into the British upper class during the 1700s. The title character is the illegitimate daughter of a slave and a white admiral in the Royal Navy. Although she's an heiress, she still must deal with racism and inequality. Here's a clip. I don't, my dear. Papa. Good Lord, the Negro. She really is. A lady. Capital. I have no idea she would be so black. Did you not listen to the rumors when you were spreading them, Mama? May I present the second of my two nieces? Miss Dido Lindsay. A pleasure, Miss Lindsay. Joining me now to talk about this historic movie is Professor Lisa Alexander from the Department of Africana Studies at Wayne State University. Welcome to Thank American Black Journal. Thank you for inviting me. Boy, that, that scene where she says, I had no idea she would be so black. black. Yes. <laughs> so that's, you know, stunning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that looks like, it looks like a really good, good movie. It but is it's a also movie. a story that's much more common, I feel like, in our history than most people are willing or ready to acknowledge. Yes, I mean, there were a lot of mixed race relationships. One of the reasons why we have a very diverse looking population uh, right, right. around the world and so it should not really come as a great shock to people that there are, there were mixed race relationships. Right, right. So so tell me about this particular story. This is a, a slave and uh, 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 an admiral in the Royal Navy who had uh, a relationship. Yes, and a, a produced a daughter uh, and the admiral wanted uh, his daughter to have all of the uh, privileges that she was entitled to based on his rank right. uh, and asked his aunt and uncle to raise her uh, as they would their own own children uh, and they did that and she was raised in a household of great uh, privilege. Yeah, right, right, which was unusual. I yes. mean, mostly uh, in these kind of relationships then the, the, the offspring were kept out of right out of that society. So so what what uh, what sort of effect did that have? I mean on white society but then also on this this African American woman who's sort of alone really in that world. Well it was really interesting because of her class status she had this wonderful privilege that other black women at the time did not have. Did not have. Right. Uh, but that that class privilege didn't protect her from the racism and the sexism that were inherent at the time. So we see the, the main character kind of trying to figure out how to navigate, okay, I have this money, I have this privilege, but as we saw in the clip, there are still people who are going to treat me a certain way because of my skin color. And also, this is the 1700s, so I'm right. also going to be treated a certain way because I am a woman. Right. Uh, and trying right. to deal with the intersections of all of those that identities. That gender uh, difference is, is, of course, pronounced, and some people say is, is as pronounced as racial differences at that point. Yes, and in the film, it's interesting. Uh, the title character has a, a white uh, cousin who does not have the same economic privilege that she does. So her white cousin is forced to marry uh, into a wealthy family where uh, our title character has money and can marry for love if she chooses to. Right, right. Uh, but because of her race, she's not able to navigate kind of the courting process in right, the same way because the suitors that she might attract might not, as we saw, uh, want to deal with her because of her race. Because of her race, right. Uh, I mean, this is a story that's set in the 1700s, uh, but th there are themes uh, in in this story that we see play out today. Yes, class privilege may, is probably not going to protect you from racism right. and sexism. <laughs> right. uh, we know this today, and our title character learns that throughout the course of the film. Yeah. And really experiences a political awakening because of the backdrop of the story is a slavery case that her uncle is trying to uh, adjudicate. And so she really learns about what slavery is about, uh, yeah. which she has been sheltered from uh, due to her class privilege. And she really starts to understand, hey, if other other black women can be treated as property, you know, what's going to what happen to me? What does this mean for me? me? Sure. Uh, and she really does tr uh, try to find ways to figure that out and to make sure that other people can uh, experience the same privileges that she has been given. Right. Yeah, so the, the main character here, in some ways, reminds me of President Obama in the sense mm -hmm. of uh, someone who's been, uh, you know, put into a position that's not like any other right. African-American has, but uh, 
and it's a powerful position, but still has to deal with the limitations of race. I mean, you think of how often uh, uh, race defines the interactions people have with President Obama. I mean, I, I, I am constantly talking about the, the sort of disrespect yes. that he's shown, uh, by even by the press corps uh, sometimes, uh, that I don't think would, would happen if he were white. I, I, the, the character here sort of is in the same situation. But she has the added gender uh, And she's got the issue uh, another well. issue, so right, another dynamic. Figure, uh, and at that making time. Making that worse. Yeah, right. women were basically second class citizens as well. And you add race on top of that, you know, she's a third and fourth class citizen. Right. Uh, but her money, you know, get, affords her a little bit of protection from that. Uh, and so it isn't until she's much older, at least as portrayed in the film, that she understands, you know, what racism and sexism is. Right. Uh, and which is not something that I think uh, President President Obama not, had to do. He, he's he, not he figured that out. That, yeah, he figured right? that out long before right. our title character did. Right. Yeah. Um, when we talk about stories like this, I mean, it also reminded me of uh, Thomas Jefferson and <laughs> the Hemings, Hemings uh, yes. family, and that the struggle that we still have over that. I mean, that still seems to make people very uncomfortable yes. uh, for a number of reasons, and and some of them are are I think very justified. One is this relationship between uh, uh, slave owners and slaves that it, it can be I suppose romantic but it's not consensual right, right. I mean uh, you can't uh, consent if you are not free right. uh, if you're not even seen as a human being not even seen as a human being you're seen as property uh, you know those kind of things still really really bother us and we're not we're not comfortable talking about them and particularly talking about them in terms of the powerful people who who helped create this country. Right, we have this tendency, and I don't know if this is a tendency in the United States or a human tendency, we try to erase the flaws of our heroes. <laughs> right, uh, right, and so we they have could to, not have done that, right? <laughs> right, we have to acknowledge that Thomas Jefferson, you know, did some great things, you know, we live in the United States, the country is, is, is good, if, <laughs> if problematic, but we also have to acknowledge that there was some problematic issues going on, in fact, that he owned uh, human beings. Right. He did not necessarily see them as human, but if you read his notes on the state of, uh, of Virginia, he says, you know, if there is a just God, there is no way he's going to take our side to take on this our issue. Side, right. uh, and so he did understand that right. what he was doing was I mean, he was, was deeply wrong. conflicted. Yes. And I think the relationship with Sally Hemings really illustrates that. He <laughs> obviously saw her as human, uh, right. even though he wasn't treating her that way. Right, and in the relationship in the film between uh, Lord Mansfield, uh, the uncle, and, and uh, Dido was very much this idea that he he loved her deeply, and but he understood what problems she would have in society given her race and her gender. And like uh, you guys were discussing in the previous segment, this idea that we don't know if he would have decided on the slavery cases the way that he did if he had not been exposed to the fact that he was raising a black woman, right. you know, in the society. So having that intimate connection with people that are different from you That's right. changes your point it, of view. It gives you that other a broader perspective. perspective. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, th this film, uh, uh, you, you hope that people will will go and see it, but but it seems like we don't get enough stories like this uh, no, we don't. In, in popular media. Yeah, particularly where black women are at the center uh, of the conversation and uh, Bell Hooks in her conversation with uh, Melissa Harris Perry a few months ago talked about the fact that usually if we see tales of black women, they're battered and beaten. Uh, sure. Uh, and, and that is so not they're the They're in case. distress in some way. And yeah. that is not what this film is about. And so it is a refreshing change of pace for the way that black women right, right. are portrayed. And the, the complex dynamic there where she's not uh, battered or, or downtrodden but that she still is marginalized right. uh, because of the, 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 the restrictions in the society where she lives. Right, and there's no white savior in this film. She is the heroine <laughs> of the her heroine, own right. story. That's she figures unusual. out you know, what she needs to know about the case and takes you know, her future into her own hands, yeah. uh, which is also a great change of pace for people of color in general in right. Hollywood. Right. Uh, if you uh, you're teaching at uh, at Wayne, how often do these kind of themes come up? Do you feel like even in on college campuses and in the curriculum? Well, in the classroom it does, but that's mostly because I teach a class on black right. film. <laughs> right there you <laughs> and go. So those those so discussions. So you can have, bring it up. Right? I can bring it up. It comes up all the time, from the films of Oscar Micheaux to the films of Spike Lee to the films of uh, Ava DuVernay. You know, these issues come up in how people of color are portrayed in Hollywood and yeah. the types of stories that Hollywood uh, wants to portray. Uh, the director of Bell, who is a black British woman, is now directing a Hollywood film. Uh, so we will see if, you know, if that more, begins yeah. to progress. Oh, wow. Okay, cool.
great. Well, it's great to have you here, and uh, people should go see the film. Yes, they should. Thank yeah. you for having me. All right. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And as always, connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll return with new episodes of American Black Journal on Sunday, June 15th at 1230 p.m. Beginning that week, you can also catch the rebroadcast on a new day, Wednesdays at 730 p.m. We hope you'll tune in. We'll see you next time. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal.